सो नेक्स्ट टॉपिक फाइनेट ऑटोमेटा और फाइनेट स्टेट ऑटोमेटा ओके सो वाट डू यू मीन बाई फाइनेट ऑटोमेटा वाई वी आर यूसिंग फाइनेट ऑटोमेटा दीज थिंग्स आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन नाउ सो फाइनेट ऑटोमेटा मीन्स सम फाइनेट रप्रसेंटेशन ओके सपोज देर इज ए लैंग्वेज एल ओके दैट इज अ फाइनेट लैंग्वेज आई एम जस्ट टेकिंग अ लैंग्वेज एल विच इज फाइनेट ओके एंड अल्फाबेट दैट इज सीरो वन एंड आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द लैंग्वेज एल विच इज सेट ऑफ ऑल स्ट्रिंग्स ऑफ लेंथ टू सेट ऑफ ऑल स्ट्रिंग्स ऑफ लेंथ टू सो दिस इज अ फाइनेट लैंग्वेज यू वी ऑलरेडी सो द strings 0001 1011 these are the possible strings that this particular language can generate okay if a language is finite it is easy to check whether a particular string is present or not okay by linearly searching all the strings in the language okay so how we can write this particular language set of all strings of length to 2 by using the alphabet 0 and 1 0001 1011 1. okay Suppose I am going to search a particular string. I am just searching triple zero. Whether the string, suppose s equal to triple zero, I am going to check whether this particular string is present in this particular language. Okay. So we already know this is a finite language. So if the language is finite, we are just checking linearly. Okay. So we are checking triple zero with double zero. It is not equal. Then triple zero with zero one. It is not equal. Triple zero equal to one zero. It is not equal. Triple zero equal to double one which is not equal so we can say that this particular string is not present in this particular language okay so in case of finite language it is easy to check whether the whether the string is present or not okay suppose the language is infinite okay if it is an infinite language we can't check all the possible strings we are we can't cross check with all the strings available in the language it will it is going to infinity okay so if language is infinite it is not possible to check all the available strings in the language okay so it is not possible to store all the strings in language in the memory of a computer okay so infinite language means it will it will goes to infinity so in the previous video i explained one example for infinite language that is set of all strings starting with zero so 0 0 0 0 0 etc 0 1 0 1 1 etc it will goes to infinity if i want to check a particular string is present or not in this particular language we need to check all the strings okay until we find a particular string so in this particular case so there are no more number of strings right so storing all these strings in the language that sorry so storing all the strings in the computer memory is not possible okay so for any language there should be some finite representation or finite automata that can represent in memory okay so we for any for corresponding to any language we should have some finite representation for any language we should have some finite representation and this finite representation is our finite automata okay so for any particular language we should have some finite representation and we are applying string on this particular representation the automata will say whether this particular string is present or not present okay so why we are using finite automata in case of infinite language if you want to check whether a particular string is present in the language it is very difficult to check okay because the number of strings are more and it is not able to store all the possible strings in the memory of a computer so for any particular language we should have a finite representation and we are applying a string to this finite representation it will say either yes or no depending upon the presence of string in this particular language okay so when we are taking a finite automata a finite automata consists of set of states there will be set of states in an automata a finite automata consists of set of states okay and each state is represented by a circle okay inside the circle you can represent the name of the state suppose i am taking q0 as the name of this particular state okay so every state is represented by a single circle okay and initial initial state can be represented by a circle with an arrow mark this means this state is an initial state 
okay there will be only one initial state or starting state for an automata so this is known as initial state or starting state okay so all the states are represented by a circle okay initial state is represented by a circle with an arrow mark okay and there may be there will be one or more final states in an automata okay so final states are represented by double circle okay so this indicate suppose q3 suppose i am naming this state q3 and i am considering q3 as the final state then we are uh, representing it with a double circle okay so this is final state okay and if we want to move from so i already told you in an automata there will be number of states and starting state is represented by an arrow mark so there will be suppose in an, in my automata there are three states okay and this is the final state the okay, final state is represented by double circle okay and i am naming these states q0 q1 q2 okay so here q0 is the starting state q2 is the final state okay so in order to move from this state to this state or from any state to another state we need to show some transition by transition okay so q0 q0 to q1 okay then q if i want to move from q1 to q2 i need to represent a transition okay so from one state to another state we are going by using a particular input symbol okay so q0 while seeing the input symbol a it is moving to the state q1 okay so q1 while seeing the input symbol b it is going to the state q2 okay so in order to move from one state to another we can show transition by using this particular arrow mark okay here a and b are the alphabets input symbols so you are going to study finite automata okay so finite automata is divided into two types one is finite automata without output and another is finite automata with output okay finite automata without output three types three types of automata there one is dfa second type is nfa and third type is epsilon nfa okay dfa nfa and epsilon nfa are the automata belongs to which category finite automata without output okay and finite automata with output two automata is there two machines there one is mooley machine another one is mealy machine okay so finite automata is divided into two types finite automata without output and finite automata with output finite automata without output three categories dfa deterministic finite automata nfa non deterministic finite automata then epsilon nfa okay there will be some epsilon moves that is epsilon nfa and the finite automata with output two types mooley machine and mealy machine so you need to study all these automatas fine dfa nfa epsilon nfa mooley machine and mealy machine okay so in the next video i will explain you what is dfa how to construct dfa okay